parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week on the Wrestling Mayhem Show, we've got the Blue Meanie. We've got Armando Alejandro Estrada. We've got Johnny Gargano. We talk about this week's Raw. We've got minutes upon minutes of mayhem. And we talk about WrestleMania. Refunds stick around. Hey guys, welcome! It's the Wrestling up, Mayhem up, Show, Jesus. and GJ Lunchbox is <laughs> talking over me. Show. It's uh, episode uh, three sixty-five. It's thundering out there, but we're bringing the lightning. Sixty-five. We have power here in all of our various studios. Why did you stop? It was going so well. We were both intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's the studios here in Pittsburgh, PA, the Mayhem Studios, where the thunder is roaring. And Papa Lunchbox is returning from the dark. Garth Brooks would be proud. The thunder rolls and the lightning strikes. Bam, 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 bam. The storm goes cold <laughs> on a sleepless night. <laughs> that song is actually not about storms. It's about uh, a wife. I think she kills her husband because she yeah. cheats on her. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Not important, folks. I am DJ Lunchbox coming to you live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, rain soaked. I uh, I uh, might have had to blow somebody to get power to my Lunchbox Towers, but it doesn't matter. We have power. I am the world's largest Garth Brooks fan, second only to Chris Gaines, and I am here for you. I wanted to make the Chris Gaines reference. Oh, I also <laughs> coming at us from San Antonio, Texas, where there's never rain. Is the Wrestle Fan? Never ever. There's never ever. It's and, the desert. You know, it's the desert. It's fucking. It's it's hell on earth here in Texas, and I'm and you know I'm scared. It of sucks to be here in Texas. <laughs> it really does suck. You know, oh look at me and being in Pittsburgh. We don't have power because water is falling from the sky. I am dying <laughs> of thirst right now. <laughs> As we Go speak, and, and yet I'm doing a podcast because I love all you guys. So. Awesome. And coming from a place where there's no lack of water ever is Bobby <laughs> FJ Town. Yep. And we were just named the seventh fastest shrinking. No, no, the the fastest shrinking city in America. Fastest shrinking. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Go hometown, Johnstown. Go Johnstown, PA. <laughs> and of course, yep. this is your Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find audio and video versions of this show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Blip TV, Roku, and the YouTubes and other places as well. You can also drop us a line at that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, yeah. We are uh, also have a phone number at 412-206-WMS. Zero. You know, we're done with that part. Uh, you can also hit us up on Twitter at Mayhem Show. We are, we are on Facebook. Good time. We're on Facebook. We're on Google Plus, and uh, so you can uh, converse with those there. And we got this great Facebook group. Look, you just Good look it up, Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, and that's where a lot of our discussion has been happening these days. So please go join us there. And we join can also buy the times. app, WMS Gold, on your iOS or Android phone in the iOS App Store or on the Amazon App Store. Uh, it's $1.99. Get your quick access to all the shows uh, in audio form, quick access to all the ways to communicate with us that I just talked about, as well as a little bit of Mayhem Improv that we just recorded a little bit ago in the Wrestling Mayhem Show gold bonus content uh, that we only put up there. Yes, spoiler alert. Uh, but with that, and also go out, go check out the other stuff, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We have articles up there, including Mad Mike's TNA uh, recaps, other uh, kind of musings that we put up there, too, uh, as well as um, uh, we have the Mayhem uh, Wear Store, where we have some T-shirts inspired by the show and everything. Uh, so go there, support the show. Put us on your body. What? Put us on your body. Put us on your body. So yeah, let's start to show the only way body. we know how... With the fan mail, I, we got one major one that I think belongs to Papa Lunchbox. Yes. I'm sorry because I don't already have it up. That's all right. I don't think I have it. Drive Hold on. dot <laughs> googbone. Googbone. Oh, I do. All right. 404. Is it not googbone? 
Did no, they change I don't think, I, I don't think it's Goobone. 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 I don't think that's proper. <laughs> you spell bone with an E? Yeah, um, no, well, yeah, I can start with voicemails. Uh... Well, verse uh, LB, you had a little bit of a mishap here before the show. That's very true. Uh, my power was out, uh-huh. and it was out for a while. It was out for longer than um, it normally is. Normally, it's only out for like maybe half an hour, but it was out for quite a while. So, uh, in preparation for that, for it not for it being out, I called the power company. Power is like yeah, maybe ten o'clock. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> so that's too late. Um, so I left a voicemail. Hmm. And it goes as such. Like, Woo! That's, nope. that's the wrong one. It ain't Bo Diggity. No, oh, oh, that's the right one. <laughs> that was gotcha. amazing. So my power's out, and as much as I try, I can't uh, rig a thing that'll give me the internet that's powered by a candle. So instead, I'm going to power my brain with some booze. Because God knows once you open it, you got to finish it. Otherwise, it goes bad. It's true. I have very little wrestling related to say, except for the fact that it burns when I fandango. And if I understand it properly, Jesus cries. So no, fandango, I will not fandango with you. You shit on it. Shit on it, fandango. Fuck you and your dirty, greased up mouth. Ugh. Raw was all right, what I saw. A uh, bit of a technical difficulty here in uh, the lunchbox base. The base, lunchbox, lunchbox towers, lunchbox yeah. towers. <laughs> bit of a technical difficulty here in lunchbox towers. Only caught bits and bobs. Got to see That's Kofi cool. win a title. Good for him. Now, if he can lose all the non, or lose, yeah. Lose all the non-title matches and win all the title matches, which he won't wrestle. Maybe we can have Cesaro fight Wade Barrett. I can just come all over the inside of my brain. Sounds like fun. <laughs> have that a good show. Fun. And I'd like to point out this is only to be played in the event that <laughs> uh, my fucking power doesn't come back on. Well, nope. Woo! So, um, I'm Wait, trying to figure uh, out. Uh, the, um, the box, the box is for lunch. Ha! <laughs> uh, that was worth playing, anyways. I uh, gotta say that was a convincing. I'm trying impression. to figure out who you were Thank channeling you. at the beginning there. Was or is that just straight being Bo Diggity? Well, was, yeah, Bo Diggity. Okay. I was channeling him at the beginning. Wow. That was interesting. <laughs> that was really interesting. Uh, we do have another voicemail, I believe, since we're on this track. Uh, we might as well get them out of the way here. Uh, this one, I did not review this one, so I'm presuming it's one person in particular. Hey, Mayhemers. Matt Carlin's here. Oh, that's right. I did read it. You're all buddy in the mainstream media. I am uh, calling you from the car. I'm driving into work. I'm doing this from the car. Or as... Uh, I like to call it, do it Bo Diggy style. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks for uh, tweeting out my uh, my little post on the uh, Money famous. in the Bank cash in rankings. Um, curious, uh, curious, two items. Just two items. How many of you guys might have agreed with me or might have disagreed with me? I know Mad Bike uh, had a different take. Different take. Um, so just wondering what you guys think was the best money in the bank cash in. And um, while we're on the topic, uh, Matt Mike mentioned uh, as an aside that um, that the uh, Edge first money in the bank cash in and um, the live sex celebration that followed um, was the birth of the Wrestling Mayhem show. <laughs> I haven't been around for that long, but maybe that's true, maybe not. So, wonder if you guys could maybe enlighten me on that little piece of little WMS history. And uh, okay, I'll just hang up and listen. Then have a nice show. Bye. That actually is true. Uh, the first episode of the show officially on record, uh, if you were to go back on the Wrestling Mayhem Show classic feed up on iTunes, starts with us me uh, exclaiming uh, haphazardly, "I saw Lita's titty nipple," I believe. 
<laughs> yeah, you're totally right. Uh, Fuck, I forgot about that. Yeah. So uh, so that's what happened there. Uh, no, no, yeah, we, we, we started the show, like, the week after that, the, well, the next day after that happened, basically. And we were very we started, excited about it. <laughs> we should specify, we started podcasting the show. Yes. Because I think we were just kind of collectively getting together on the live stream and not necessarily recording it. I wonder if I still have some of those somewhere. That would be um, awesome. <laughs> I, I don't know. There were Because I remember the first, and I, will, I, don't, I don't think I, I could ever forget this, the first show, show in quotes, that I did with Sorg, um, the first episode was right after Eddie Guerrero died. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it was like it was the first or second episode that we did. But I remember that was very, very early on in Mayhem history. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was so. within the first year, though. Yeah, that was. I mean, that was absolutely when it was just the two of us on a live cast or on on uh, what was it that we used? Uh, Shoutcast. Shoutcast. Yeah, very very, very I had early. Had a server times. in in the studio with us mm-hmm. <laughs> that streamed it out, and I think only fifteen people could really listen to us at the same time before our bandwidth <laughs> uh, uh, crashed. Uh, so, so yeah, that was interesting. Those were the days, but yeah, uh, yeah, Mark Carlin's over on his site, 50 matches that defined the decade.blogspot.com. Yes, that's the address. Uh, yeah, he had a great retrospective, uh, ranking the money in the bank cash ins, uh, with clips. Uh, we did, uh, tweet that out over on the Mayhem Show account. Uh, I believe yesterday. So a really good, really good retrospective on what's happened mm-hmm. with them. Uh, of oh, course, yeah. ranking the Dolph Ziggler one from this past week, number one, uh, seconded by CM Punk defeating Edge, it seems. Uh, so I did you guys, any of you guys go through this and have any opinions on it? That's wrong. I did. Sorry, I, I, I agree with it for the most list. part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a really Great good. Great article. Mm-hmm. Well thought out, I thought. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So go check that out. Thank you, Matt Carlin's our friend in the mainstream media. Trying to get, trying to actually get him on the show here. So uh, of course he works. Uh, he typically works with the evening news. You know. So. Uh, oh. uh, <laughs> ooh, fancy, the evening news. Fancy. Big time fancy pants. I saw him in the Vine the other day from KDK. So that was interesting too. Yeah. Uh, so he so, is uh, in the mainstream media. media. They're vibing and stuff. Um, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's like what I got for the fan mail, sir. Do you are you ready with that one uh, lonely email there, sir? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you guys are mislabeled here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, three. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it's me, it's me, it's a big PPC, the motherfucking fan of the year. Email issues this week for yours truly. Raw was good, Smackdown good, TNA not so much, main event good, Ryback right heel good thing. Good, seen as so, seen good, still boring. Dolph as champ, fan fucking tastic. Barrett and Coffee as champs, pretty cool. I hope good things for Antonio Cesaro now without us championship. Going to be short one this week. Questions: Who do you want to take belts from Team Hell No? I like Rod Scholars or the Shield. What do you, who do you think who would you like to see Cesaro feud with next for the NXT watchers there are rumblings uh, of rumors that Cassius or no both Dallas and Adrian Neville and Bray Wyatt formerly Chris Hero no, that's not right oh no yeah okay both Rotundo, Pac and Husky Harris will be coming up Anyone seen Vader's son? And several great women wrestlers there keep an eye on NXT and don't be foolish, Mayhem Crew. Till next week. Yeah, don't be foolish. Don't be foolish, Mayhem Crew. Till next week. Riz, stop complaining. Zorg, good job, sir. WrestleFan, good luck on ACH's first title run, title shot for ROH. Boner as we speak, huh, wrestle fan? Lunchbox is the man. Keep it up, sir. And Bobby, I am enjoying your unwashed segment. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah. 
Where is the man Trotchy? Oh yeah, he doesn't like wrestling anymore. Where, where, where? <laughs> Ugh. Till then, it's me, it's me, it's fan of the year at Big PPC. Sent from Meffin. Excellent. Excellent. I'm glad he didn't say my unwashed body. <laughs> Love you. Unwashed. Bobby, I am enjoying your unwashed body. I was a hobo earlier tonight. So. I enjoy when it smells and tastes like salty Cheetos. <laughs> How would you I like? want to I want to feel your back pussy. <laughs> 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 uh, it's over. It's over. Uh, what? I don't even. I don't even know if there was a question. Uh, what was the question? Uh, what do you want to see Antonio Cesaro do uh, now that he's not the U.S. champion anymore? I, I, I want to, what I want to say to you last night, Russell fan. I think this is a uh, he. He dropped that so he could step up, step up to the main event, or at least you know, jobbing for I, the main event. I or, hope so. I so, fucking yeah. really hope so. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I think I see money in the bank in his future. Oh, that could be. Ooh, that could be. Ooh, yes, that'd be amazing. Um, if he, as maybe. long as he stops yodeling. Oh. oh, yeah, that's the bigger thing. As much as I was like upset with him losing the Kofi, just because I'm a huge Cesaro fan, like I can still get over it. WWE, the worst part was the fucking yodeling that they gave him. He's hey, been doing we have Antonio weird. Cesaro, literally the best part of Monday Night Raw. You know what? <laughs> We need to give him a fucking yodeling gimmick. Fuck you, WWE. Isn't that you know what they what? do in this country? Yeah, I, yeah I, but he can't do it. What people do is they fucking yodel. Hold on, wrestle fan. Hold on. You're just assuming now that it was someone in creative who said, "Go out and yodel." It could. Yeah. They could have just said, "Go out and do something funny," or "Go out and do whatever," and he decided to yodel. You can't automatically assume it was it was WWE creative because it failed. Now look at look at primetime players. They came out and they did uh, the Uncle Rasmus or whatever it was in the Steel City, and we <laughs> loved it. So we automatically assumed that it was their idea, not WWE creative. I don't know. I mean, I think it could have been no, creative, no, brother. We don't. I think know. I think it could have been. I've never seen Claudio fucking yodel ever <laughs> because he's fucking horrible at it. Yeah, he's not good. But WWE bad, is bad I mean, WWE has a you know personally WWE has a history of being very racially sensitive. Lunchbox. <laughs> they do. They do. They're very respectful. What, are we worried I'm about uh, the offending the Swiss? There, saying, oh, you're Swiss. Let's let's make you yodel. <laughs> you better come out with some hot chocolate sometime too. Let's just complete yeah. it. Oh, I would buy Cesaro hot chocolate. Oh yes. I Remember he used to have the chocolate. cafe video. What if it becomes like? Uh, yeah. Cafe uh, Cesaro's yodeling uh, hot chocolate corner. Tiny little very European marshmallows. <laughs> 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 I don't know how to yeah. define that. <laughs> but, who do you yeah, want? Go- who do you want to take the tag belts from Team Hell No? <sighs> Fuck. That no was the other question. There's no me. one. There's no one there. The Shield. The Shield. Okay. I, I kind of want. I, I think it makes sense for the Shield at this point, and they freebird it. It would make sense for the yeah. shield. I would still love for it to be Damien and Cody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Just um, I think the otherwise, best. I still want Teddy Long to go heel with whatever they're going with this, and he forms a new Doom with Zeke and Big E. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow. Yes. I don't. I, I don't, I, I, I don't I know like how that, quickly Biggie's you've ever gotten a boner in your right life, now. but you've, if you've ever had an instant boner, you get dizzy. <laughs> and I just got it when you said that. Also, uh, by the also way. going back to the Cesaro question of who we should feud with now, I would love to see a Cesaro Jack Swagger feud. All right, yeah, I can see that. You say so you're much. saying that maybe a face Cesaro. Yeah, I think they could do it. That'd be that'd be cool. That'd be cool. All right, yeah. I wouldn't mind he seeing the primetime players. Foreigners. Yeah, yeah, just to give them a little bit of relevance. They've been yeah, they've been so really good do. for so long, and they're becoming entertaining. And and they're doing they're doing enough, you know. I, I guess, losing the team hello like nine hundred times on Raw. Yeah, but what are you gonna do? What what else are you gonna do with that kind of situation? You know uh, how many times you, you know back in the day it was night in night out. You know, Heart Foundation has a belt and 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 lose to uh, you know, uh, and and, and uh, killer bees go under them or something. You know, I mean that's that's how it works, dude. We just see it more because of TV these days. So yeah, but. 
That's wrestling. It's repetition, man. It, it, it really is. It, especially on the it's, undercard like it's, that. It's, it's true. It's a sad truth. It but, is. You know. It is. So, all you right, know, with that. Recent, yes. Recently, I was, I've been rereading a book. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a book that's been out for a very long time. But it's a book that I think that, that every wrestling fan should read. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, it's called World Wrestling Insanity mm-hmm. by uh, James go Gutman. I do need to go see that, yeah. I thought it was going to be it's, good to fuck to sleep. It's a it's a really good book, but there's a chapter in it that it basically breaks breaks down every wrestling stereotype. Okay. Um and it's brilliant and accurate. You know what I mean? Like it's it's like if you're Samoan you have to look like this and you'll act like this or this. If you're British it's this or this. Uh I wanna see if I have it on here. Um I'd like to I'd like to bring it up and it's not on here. I think it's on my iPad. Shit out of luck. Um, but uh, it's it's a great book, and everyone should read it, if nothing else, just for that one chapter. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Now, we did receive one more email. Weeks from now. That seems like exactly two weeks uh, from now. That's a fortnight. Odd. That's weird. Uh, so so yeah, there's there's a chat room again. Okay, there you go. Uh, so yeah, this picture showed up uh, uh, in the mailbox. Uh, I think today, uh, this morning. So we'll see what that's. Take a shot, Pancake Patterson, Swiss or Race Wyatt's. I'm just reading. Riz, the Riz is drunk. Riz is drunk. <laughs> Go home, Riz. You're drunk. Go home, Riz. So with Fire that, drunk show, Riz. We'll, we'll contemplate what that is about. Uh, but in the meantime, we do have an interview. And DJ Launchbox, you wanted me to ask a question, and I did ask it to uh, a returning member. I ran into this guy. I couldn't believe it. I was walking the halls of WrestleCon, and there he was. And he doesn't wear anything but that suit and hat, I'm telling you, man. So I talked to Armando Estrada, and I'll have <laughs> him. <laughs> and uh, we'll let him do justice to how that name's set right now. Hey, guys, look what I found. Sorg's here, WrestleCon, and an old friend of our show. Wait, wait, what's your name again, sir? Amigo, everybody knows my name. I'll get to that in a second. If you have a question, ask it. Otherwise, vamos. <laughs> All right, how, how is the con uh, here in New Jersey uh, trading you, sir? Well, it's great to be back in New York, the city that doesn't sleep, New Jersey right across the border. Uh, I always have fun here. I love seeing the fans. I love seeing all my former comrades, you know, one more time. And uh, so far, so good. You know, I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a good time, as only I can. <laughs> excellent. excellent. Uh, what have you been up to lately? You know, I do a little bit of the uh, signings here. I enjoy coming out and doing those uh, all over the country. There's a lot of great fans that I go out and meet, and I'm having fun doing that. Excellent, excellent. Last time you were on the show, of course, I know you were doing a restaurant down in Phoenix. So DJ Lunchbox, he was very eager. You, you, you made all of us very hungry talking about what you were doing down there. So DJ Lunchbox wants to know, do you have his sandwich? You know, I do not, I do not have the, uh, I don't do the restaurant business anymore because I'm not crazy anymore. And I wanted to have a life back, so I went back to the wrestling business. Ah. That's the Sainer's choice in comparison even to even restaurant business? The restaurant business was the hardest business anybody can ever get into. So any aspiring restaurateurs, take it from me. Keep your day job. Ah. I'm going to pass that one along to my wife. And I'm sure she's a very fine woman for having to deal with you. All right. All right. I got one last question here. This is the big question we ask everybody here on the Mayhem Show in this past year. So uh, so let us know if you were any kind of vegetable, any kind of vegetable, what would you be? Well, first of all, I think that's a ridiculous question, but I'll answer it nonetheless because it is your show. And if I had to be any vegetable, I would be a big celery stalk. Dipped in peanut butter with raisins on top. <laughs> I believe they call that an ant on a log. But I'm not an ant on a log. I'm not a celery stalk. I am the one, the only, Armando Alejandro Estrada. Ha <laughs> ha.
All right. Thanks a lot. Where can people find you online? Follow me on Twitter at Real Armando. Ha ha. That's one word. Real Armando. H A H A. All right. Thanks a lot. We are back as Armando Estrada. Ha <laughs> ha. And of course, a little bit of view. What's going on in IWC? Go check out the DVDs at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. And, uh, and that was the time to talk about amateur uh, falling down. It's uh, time for the Indie Minute with the Russell fan. What? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for another edition of this week's Indie Minute. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is a big, huge event that I'm going to this weekend. Uh, and for a group that we don't really talk about a lot on the show, uh, you know the NWA, right? The National Wrestling the, Alliance. What's with Attitude? Oh, yeah. Uh, we, the, we, ninjas, right? Ninjas with Attitude. The ninjas with Attitude, right? Yeah, fucking awesome wrestling promotion. Um, no, uh, the National Wrestling Alliance. Uh, they're holding their big uh, Parade of Champions event uh, on April 20th in uh, Houston, Texas, at the Houston Athletic Fencing Center. Uh, it's a fencing it's, it's, center? It's a fencing center. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, that I, means I, there are weapons on the premises. Yeah, I know. It's. I'm, I'm going to be intrigued. I may have to look uh, to see uh, if I can get into their fencing program. <laughs> um, but no, uh the, the card for this show actually looked very, very stacked. Um, personally, I've uh, got to experience a lot of the NWA products being from Texas. Uh, they have a lot of affiliates down here. I got to say, I do like a lot of what they're doing. They're putting on a lot of the best shows in Texas. And a lot of people think of the NWA and they think the very old school sort of stuff. And I got to say, it's the product product wise, it's very modernized. I think it's very you know, it can hold it can hold up to any wrestling company. I think mm-hmm. uh, there's obviously I'm mean, we've had this discussion before, obviously, but there's I think there is stuff they need to work on. Uh, but you know, I really have seen the promise in the NWA, and I think they can put on some really good stuff. But I'm very excited. Uh, I will be attending this event. Uh, it should be a really awesome time. The main event is uh, for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Rob Conway, uh, the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion, will be taking on Chris Masters uh, in a uh, clash of former WWE guys. Uh, Rob Conway's got a uh, big uh, task ahead of him. Uh, he's facing a man. No one up- can break the master lock. You can't break it. You can't break it. Nobody can break it. Mm-hmm. And also you can't break uh, – you know, his tree uprooting uh, abilities. Uh, but, you know, that should be a really fun event. Uh, another no, the double sense. main event, uh, another match is a double title match for the NWA Tag Team Titles and the IWGP Tag Team Titles from Japan. Uh, the Kings of the Underground, uh, Scott Summers and Ryan Genesis, taking on Lance Archer and Davey Boy Smith Jr. Hmm. Uh, with both tag titles on the line. That should be an awesome, awesome stuff. What a pairing. <laughs> Yeah, um, the, it's it's very very awesome. Uh, you, you should follow more New Japan. Uh, the Killer Elite Squad, as they're unknown, are really dominating that uh, in uh, New Japan, uh, and that will be a very interesting show. So, uh, like I mentioned, I believe more information, ticket uh, information, you can get at nwahouston.com. dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, if you're in the Texas area, I encourage you to go check that out. Uh, like I mentioned, I will be there. There's tons of young talent that will be there uh, from the Texas area. Uh, as well as also different parts of the country. Uh, I believe there's some from Mexico, some from Canada. Uh, so it'll be a fun, fun time. Uh, so go check them out, and I hope to see everyone there. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about is another event coming up this weekend for our friends at Shine Wrestling uh, in Ybor City, Florida, on the 19th. Uh, one of the premier women's wrestling professions in the country will be holding their event this weekend. Uh, it looks like very, very great stuff. If you can't make it to Ybor City, you can also order it on WWNLive.com on iPay-Per-View. Uh, that'll be a Wait, really, where really is it? fun. I'm sorry? Where is it? Uh, Ybor City, Florida. Nobody can make it to Ebor City, Florida. That isn't a place that exists. Wrestle faker. I apparently uh, it's 
it, the, the, the name is spelled weird, so I know it's, it's I'm, I'm very misleading. So You're I don't know why you put a Y in there. Um, but yeah, you know what? Uh, I think I think Wrestle Fan. Just to have stuff to talk about on the show, you're creating all these fake profiles and fake websites with fake wrestlers just to talk about these events that don't actually exist in cities that also do not exist. Like the uh, Advil. Boom. Gotcha. Amazing Kong is real, though. And she's on this event, as well as you know, many I don't other believe she is. stars in the country. Sorry? Okay, go ahead. Sorry. That's okay. Um, but like I mentioned, you can go to shinedusting.com for more information on that. So you, you can check it out live uh, in the mythical land that is Ebor City, Florida, um, or on iPay-Per-View. So definitely go check them out. Uh, and the final – well, the next thing I do want to mention is that uh, our friends at RWA have an event coming up this weekend on the 20th uh, for Spring Fling 5 and in uh, Western Pennsylvania. Uh, Sorgatron Media will be there doing the filming and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it should be a really fun time uh, like going back there for RWA in West Newton, right, Sorg? Yep, yep. Always a good time with them. Uh, looks like I will be down in attendance, uh, perhaps maybe even returning to uh, ringside camera there. Uh, so uh, go check them out uh, over at rwalive.com. We got DVDs up, of course, with them uh, too. Um, uh, can I mention another one? We uh, and I'll see if I can bring up the Facebook page for them. Um, the Dustin Batdorf Invitational is actually this weekend or this Friday as well in Massillon. Massillon, yes. Maslin, Ohio. <laughs> Don't say it like oh, me. Yeah. Oh, another made-up location <laughs> where there's a wrestling event. Yes, there is a wrestling event, and this is the second of, of such annually. Uh, so go check that out if you're uh, in the uh, middle Ohio area. It's uh, Dropkick uh, the Addiction. It's actually a uh, benefit invitational show uh, for uh, Dustin Batdorf that uh, died a couple years ago, I believe, of drug overdose. Uh, so it's a really good cause and everything uh, up there at the uh, you know really cool big mega church over there in Maslin, Ohio. Uh, so uh, so so yeah, uh, go check it out. There's footage up there actually, uh, highlights and everything from last year's event uh, that we are also uh, uh, proud to be involved with as well. Uh, Chachi and I uh, both went out for that show uh, uh, last year to work on that. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, it, just look uh, up uh, Jap- Dustin uh, Batdorf Invitational uh, on Facebook, and you'll be able to uh, find that stuff uh, as well. So, yeah. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, the end, the last thing I want to talk about, since we're mentioning Sorgatron Media, uh, mm-hmm. uh, IWC uh, had two big events this past weekend that Sorgatron Media was a part of, uh, both uh, in Meadville, PA, uh, and also <laughs> in West Virginia. So, Sorg, uh, tell me, how did those go? Uh, it was really great, actually. And actually, let's see. Oh, they used my Instagram on the front page. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Jesse the Mark. Uh, I don't know. I was just like kind of like, we, we, we need more pictures on the Facebook page so I've been I've been saying a lot of stuff over to them uh, so uh, no it was really good time really exhausting to do a double shot weekend <laughs> in Meadville and then going all the way down to West Virginia uh, the next day it didn't make sense to come all the way back to Pittsburgh you know uh, so uh, so it was really cool uh, uh, to see gold dust uh, uh, Roddy Roddy Piper uh, Vader as well. Uh, it's always a really good time. Really huge, you know, big crowd filled, filled that gym, uh, up there in Meadville. Um, you know, really hot crowd with everything. I heard a little bit of Fandangoing starting up there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah I've, seen, I've, I've been to an indie show where there was a bit of, a bit little of bit. it's starting, it's starting. Now that was a bigger crowd. I didn't see it with like the 300 people down in uh, West Virginia though. Um, are these smaller crowds trying it there that you're seeing there, Russell? Yeah, team? it was about 200 that mm-hmm. was there. And there was like maybe four people doing it. You know, so, it wasn't anything huge. I'm really excited to see what happens because I know Justin Plummer got around and he got to do some stuff for Aftershock uh, with all the, the, the legends uh, that were on the show. Here's a shot there actually with Dalton Castle and Gold Dust. Oh, my God, how could have that gone? <laughs> so uh you know just to give you an idea there i mean it was uh, it was pretty cool uh there was this that showed up here's you guys for the video um there's a uh, uh a, these guys when they came and sat down there was actually a chant that started of harry vader uh and then oh. this jim Cornette guy which there was a video over on our uh, wrestling mayhem show f- facebook group of joe dombrowski doing his jim Cornette impression with this guy 
So a little <laughs> bit of dueling cornets going on there, and him at his own uh, uh, merch table that I've been talking about the last couple of weeks that he's been running at these shows. Uh, so that that's been pretty amazing. Uh, a real good show overall. Uh, you know, I always love these big shows, and this is actually the first time we got to do uh, Sorgatron Media spearheading, uh, you know, something like a Legends or a Superstar show. Uh, so it was really cool to be, you know, uh, kind of you know in charge of that. And I gotta say, midget wrestling. Midget wrestling. Midget wrestling happened. Oh, we little people aren't scarred anymore. Around. So little no, people all uh, over town. One of the reasons that Chachi's not around anymore, right? So, uh, and outside of that, and and here's actually even another shot uh, coming up here. There's a little bit of the signing and the meet and greet and everything. Filled that gym. That is the line. That in the back is the the line for Roddy Roddy Piper rapping back and forth about four times across the gymnasium. Awesome. Nice. So everybody was excited to see Piper. Great to see the uh, Pro Wrestling News and Views guys were up there doing the interviews for their show. I uh, got to talk to them a little bit. Uh, but the next day in uh, for Mountain State Madness in uh, Newell, West Virginia, which is actually right down, uh, I think it's right next door to uh, Zemion's uh, hometown down there. So he got to be uh, involved in that as well. Um, I think we have two very good uh, candidates for match of the year. Uh, well, one a little less so because of something that happened. But uh, it, it, the the night before, there was a really good three way between Mike Elgin, Anthony Nese mm-hmm. as a Super Indy champion defending, and Kid Cash, which by itself you know sounds great, right? Well, the yeah. next night we had a rematch of sorts with Elgin and Nese, mm. tremendous match. Um, I need to see that. Followed by. A match between Facade, uh, first well, uh, first singles match back. He was actually involved in a tag team match the night before uh, against Kid Cash. Another tremendous match, and I would say candidate for a match of the year, but a little bit of fan interaction. <laughs> oh. uh, right in front of me, and we were, we're we we set up rather close. I don't know if I have a picture up here in my Instagram or anything. Uh, but we, we, I mean, it, it, we set up rather close with the, oh yeah, you know, we, we, we have an unmanned hard cam for them cause they're, they're our kind of, you know, we call, kind of call them house shows, uh, internally. Um, mm-hmm. and the guy in front of me, uh, he kind of semi picked the fight with, uh, John McChesney earlier in the night. Uh, but then like Kid Cash kept going at some of these people, uh, on my, had it been my side too, right? Uh, to the point where this guy got up several, both these guys got up several times during the match up to the railing to get in the face of uh, Cash, who kept saying, come oh. over the rail, come over the rail. Like, oh, to the funny. point where I thought it was like, it really kind of took away from the match, unfortunately. Um, and whatever your pins are, Kid Cash or anything, I heard some rumblings maybe about the match, I don't know. Uh, but uh, it just, it was just unfortunate, because otherwise the match was tremendous, you mm-hmm. know. But it's still kind of a let's get out of here so they don't have a, a, a riot right in front of my stuff. You know, uh, it, it, it's just uh, it's unfortunate. But uh, but otherwise, that really good show. Um, I think they got an even bigger crowd than they did before. Like, they ran out of chairs. You know, that's always a good mm-hmm. good sign. It's always a good sign. So um, well, they could go to Kmart and spend eighty dollars and thirty dollars <laughs> and buy a WWE chair. Yes, I just, guess just put could. your poster, put the IWC poster, and like duct tape it yeah. onto the chair. <laughs> That's what you should do. You should do. Take home your chair. But we rented these, though. <laughs> nope. Mm. Don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, no, it was a good time. Great weekend. Great wrestling. Um, I'm looking forward to another double shot here with two different groups this weekend. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, they're, yeah, one's a little more local. So, um, But no, I think it was a pretty good weekend. Uh, unfortunately, the next one's a Friday show, which kills me. Uh, but that'll be Road to Super Indie. And I, I, I'm uh, really like to see how uh, Super Indie is going to be uh, shaping up here. Oh, you're going to get a match from Saturday night on YouTube here shortly. Uh, the... Uh, 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 Corey Matthews, you know these guys, Russell fans. Uh, Corey, Matthews. Corey Matthews. What's that? What? Boy Meets World? <laughs> no, not the Boy Meets uh, Corey Hollis and uh, Kyle Matthews, I believe. I was right, the two names are in there. Uh, yeah, but they had a qualifier there. match that was pretty good. It was kind of the uh, opener bonus match, uh, and then we're, we're going to be putting that online as a little bit of a carrot there. Nice. Uh, so uh, look for that here very soon. Uh, it'll be on the DVD and everything, too. So. Um, but no, very fun show. Very, very fun show. Very good time. The people of Meadville, as usual, are tremendous, and the people in Newville are always interesting. 
<laughs> no, they're they're great too. But yeah, it's great. That's great. So awesome. all right, anything else there, Russ fan? That is all I have for this week in indie wrestling. Mm-hmm. But I just, I, I just want to add that I would have Topanga as a valet. You would. You would. Yeah, I would yeah. too. I would too. And 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 Corey. Actually, it would be fitting if it was Corey Matthews at a show with Vado for no, with no less. Yeah, I did. I didn't think about that connection, trail? right? I did not think about that connection. <laughs> and they would drive up and kit because I was Mr. Feeney. Holy <laughs> crap! Is that the Penga? Am I yeah, seeing this? Am I seeing yeah. this right? Yep, 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 mm-hmm. yep, 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 yep. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Boy Meets World podcast. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I so stopped man. paying attention for a second because I think it's the Indie Minute and we're, I come back, we're talking about Topanga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's super hot. Wow. I might have to watch <laughs> that new show. Um, Are we still anyways. talking about the Indie Minute or can I put something in here? <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Are you what, what are you what? trying to put in? It does, it's got nothing to do with Indie Wrestling. <laughs> Does it have anything to do with wrestling? I found, I found an old YouTube video called The Entire TNA Monday Night War in Four Minutes. I <laughs> Do you remember when TNA decided to compete with WWE and bring in Hulk Hogan? Oh, mm. fun times. Just, just search for uh, TNA Monday Night War in Four Minutes on YouTube. It is fucking entertaining. Awesome. <laughs> Well, with Obviously that, more entertaining than the Indie Minute. With that, that's the Indie Minute. Thank you very much, Russell Fan. Go check out all that stuff. Uh, speaking of Indie, there was a guy that made a lot of noise over WrestleCon. We got to talk to him before he made a lot of that noise. Johnny Gargano, friend of the show, returning once again. Uh, so let's go find out what vegetable he'd be here. Mayhem Show, followed by Gold, and then uh, a return. Uh, Blue Mini talking about the Montreal Theory. And we'll be right back with Remember When. What's up, guys? We're back at the WrestleCon. One man cam at it again. Look who I caught up with. A re- favorite on the show. Yep. Fellow fan of the Power Rangers. Hey, did you check out that Rip the Peril shirt the other day with the uh, Power Rangers Ninja Turtles crossover they I had? I did not, actually. I have not heard about I this. I over the facade. I, mean, I have not heard about it yet. I, I, I got one coming. Okay, that's a good call. Good call. <laughs> I figured it was, it was perfect. But yeah, you're re- we're here at WrestleCon. Uh, he's involved with uh, a few different things here, right? Right, right? Yeah, love, very, very dapper today. Yeah, man. Got to like, look like an adult today. It's WrestleCon. It's a big weekend. WrestleMania weekend, the biggest weekend of the year. So you got to pull out the big guns. You got to pull out the uh, dapper for a tire, as I am right now, and uh, yeah, feeling good. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, you got to be an adult today. Are you having uh, uh, adult chai tea uh, lattes? No, I still got water. I got water from Chipotle, so they, maybe they can sponsor me because I'm putting their logo on this, so there you go. Yeah, we, well, we wish they could get Chipotle. We're getting a lot of them in the neighborhood in Pittsburgh. Uh, so so what all are you involved in here at Wrestle? I did. Or, I'm sorry, Wrestle. That's the other thing. A lot of wrestling stuff. Uh, yeah, I, free plug for Prime Wrestling. There you go. Uh, I did Evolve Wrestling yesterday. I'm doing Chikara in about, in my imaginary watch, a couple hours. And then tonight, the big one, Dragon Gate USA. I'm defending my title in the main event of the whole weekend against Shingle. And tomorrow, another Dragon Gate USA show at noon. So, WrestleCon, you've been bouncing around here a little bit. What do you think of it so uh, far? I just got here. I'm walking around. It's kind of crazy. Just randomly seeing all these, like, Kevin Nash and, like, Mickey James and everyone just walking around. And there's a Macho Man impersonator over there, which is great. Uh, that's crazy. It's a cool atmosphere. Uh, it's a great weekend, man. Awesome. You say a lot of the people watching is pretty cool here. What's the craziest thing, or is it Macho Man? It, so far, I've seen it's Macho Man. I haven't seen that much. I walked right to this booth, but I'm going to explore a little bit more. There's a guy that looks like Dave Batista over there, and I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's close, so maybe him. Awesome, awesome. What else you got going on you want to tell us about? Uh, I am going to England and Germany at the end of April. Uh, I'm going back there. Uh, first time in Germany, though. Uh, then I'm doing a bunch of other stuff, and I will be everywhere and anywhere. I'm sure everyone's very sick of me right now because I wrestle everywhere, <laughs> and I apologize for that. <laughs> All right, we got one more. Since you've been on last, we started this new thing. The uh, the big question that we ask everybody, Blue Mini just answered it earlier. What, if you were a vegetable, yep. what would you be? Vegetable. What vegetable would it be? Probably a, some broccoli, I think. Because I like broccoli, and like it's got cool little stems on it, and it's very strong. It's a very sturdy vegetable. It's got a strong base to it. So I'm going to go broccoli. And sometimes well-dressed as well. Yeah, exactly, right? It's, it's probably the prettiest vegetable. So I'm going to go broccoli. I can tell you you're broccoli buddies with Blue Meanie. Yeah, well, who, what Blue Meanie said? He said broccoli too? See? Great minds think alike. Me and the Blue Meanie, one and the same. <laughs> 
All right, thanks a lot. Where can I see you online and uh, coming up? You can find me on Twitter at Johnny Gargano. I'm mildly entertaining sometimes. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Johnny Gargano. Uh, you can go to my website, Johnny. There's a line in the middle there. I don't know the name for that. Gargano.com, and you can just follow all everything I do on there. Excellent. Thanks a lot. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Potassium. <laughs> First hobo I've met, Hobo Johnson. Now listen, if you're if you're taking every say, bit of red wine, say my name right. Say it correctly. Say the full name, Hobo Bartholomew Johnson. Oh, I'm sorry, Hobo Bartholomew Johnson. I'm gonna idea. pretend that I don't know what TNA is. I don't know any wrestler unless they've appeared in WWE in a prominent role. We're on location here at Secaucus, New Jersey. This is WrestleCon, and we are talking about the Montreal Theory. We're getting theories from some of the top names of pro wrestling's past and present. And one very opinionated, very outspoken, very unique individual is my guest at this time, ECW original, the Blue Meanie. Thank you for joining us here on YouTube. Well, Joe, thank you very much for having me. Uh, uh, I saw the trailer for your documentary, and I was instantly attracted to it. I mean, because there's been... It's been talked to death. It's something that's talked to death, but it's never been all compacted into one disc the way you've done it. I mean, I mean, there's been like been it's been mentioned on Brett's DVD, Sean's DVD, but to have some unfiltered, unbiased outside. Sorry, gotta say hi to the ladies. Uh, uh, opinion on this, and, and it totally attracted to me. I'm, I'm definitely interested in in checking it out, and. Uh, my whole opinion is, I mean, I mean, you, you bring up a great point where it was spread in on it, you know, I mean. What's your theory? Uh, my theory is, I mean, everybody benefited from it. Uh, Brett got to, see, you know, Brett got to drop the belt in his home country, save some face. Uh, Sean, without really losing. He, he lost without losing. Uh, and he, and Sean got the belt. And Vince McMahon created the top heel for his company for the next few years. And a heel he knew he could trust, and a heel he, who he knew was never going to hit himself up for more money and, and all this stuff. So he created the, a, a, a great character with the evil Mr. McMahon. Brett, you know, got to you know, go fleece WCW. I mean, trust me, Brett's worth every penny of it. But, I mean, they were paying people top dollar. You know, and, you know, Vince, you know, Got a, a hell of a story out of it, and it built to a great feud with Steve Austin. I mean, uh, I mean, he he screwed over Brent, and now he's screwing over Steve, and it, it just evolved, and you know everybody benefited. And what do you think of some of the panelists here? And you made a great point. It's not about uh, uh, people that were there in the moment and have an opinion and a personal agenda. These are great minds from so many different eras and so many different job titles. Carino, Raven, guys you know very well. Uh, what do you make of their opinions and how much weight they would hold? I mean, Carino, I mean, he's, he's worked for, I mean, Paul E. He's worked for everywhere. So, and, and, and Steve's got a great mind for the business. He's a great worker. Uh, I'm, I'm especially... Interested in you know to, you know for Kevin Kelly's opinion because he was with the company at the time and you know he was there. Uh, I mean, and Raven, Raven's one of the best minds in the business, you know. And and the fact is, you know, it, you get differing opinions and it makes for interesting water cooler talk, you know. And, and it happened in the '90s and people are still talking about it and it's still argued about. It's it's phenomenal, you know. And it's uh, it's something I'm looking forward to checking out. Now, and you've seen a lot of crazy things in your career, of course, part of the original ECW. You've done a lot of crazy things in your career. At this point, to anybody that may be a little, I don't want to say narrow-minded and sound negative, but to anybody that may be skeptical of the skeptics and, and not buy into that being possible, uh, what would you say to them? I mean, is there anything in this business that would surprise you at this point? Nothing in the business would surprise me at this point. I mean, I mean, I mean, and look, look, all the years later, Brett was going on about how he got screwed and... Now him and Vince are friendly, and he's back in the fold, and back with the family, and all is well, and, you know, swept under the rug, and him and Sean had the big, you know, hug in, on Raw, and, uh, I mean, it's it just, it, it seemed like it came full circle, it seemed, it seemed like they finally, you know, when Sean and Brett hugged in the ring, that was the blow off to the, uh, the angle, you know, and 
like I said, I mean, I ain't skeptics. I mean, people definitely benefited from it. You know, you guys say uh, if there's a work, who's benefiting it? Brett benefited by getting out of his contract, losing without losing, and going to WCW and making a whole boatload of money. Uh, Sean got another run, you know, at the World Heavyweight title, and Vince created himself, uh, uh, his own top heel. And he ran with it, and uh, it, it, it was a launching point for the Attitude Era, you know? At the end of the day, all was well in McMahon land, and all is well here with the Blue Mini at WrestleCon, because this, sir, is yours. You can check out the Montreal Theory, and we'll find out more about your theory, and we'll find out more about your theory at MontrealTheory.com. Place your order now. Buy it! Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks, Blue Meaning, talking to us about the Montreal Theory and, of course, Johnny Gargano and a little bit in there from what's going on in gold. Uh, we're back for that time of the show where we remember when... This week on Remember When, uh, we just talked about a little bit that he said that Kid Cash uh, uh, match that got a little weird uh, with a little bit of fan interaction. Uh, and, and we've seen some stuff. We've been watching wrestling for a while, whether it be in the indies or, or on TV. And, and sometimes the fans get a little maybe over-involved that make for some really interesting moments. Uh, so I thought we'd go around and talk about like some kind of memorable uh, uh, run-ins that we've seen in the past. I know uh, I, I, Riz, for instance, when I, I brought this up here uh, while we were getting ready uh, for the segment, he brought up uh, Ellsworth Baseball, Drunk Fan versus Drunk Marshall Gambino. Uh, <laughs> if I recall, it, it became a street fight that got... Uh, uh, fairly away from the ring, I think. No, no, I don't think it was. It wasn't even. I'm trying to remember where they put the ring, actually. Uh, but I just remember they were fighting in the crowd, uh, and everybody was just around them, and it turned into a shoving match between him and a fan. Uh, and the Gambinos, the Gambinos have been on the show and have said about how they do not take crap from fans to the point where I don't think they're allowed in some towns in Ohio. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so that was one thing. Uh, my, my kind of most memorable one, uh, from the indie stuff, uh, has been, uh, th and we talked about this again on the show before, uh, w w I think it was the second Clearfield Cataclysm, um, uh, that IWC did, and it was, uh, Jimmy DeMarco against J-Rock, both guys that have been on the show. Shane Taylor, uh, was, I think, the manager, and Vicky Gambino, if I recall, and some IWCers out there can, can, uh, uh, confirm that with me. At the time, no guardrails there up in Clearfield, uh, but they it, it spread out to the side, uh, you know, to the outside. You know, J Rock's uh, kind of an inciting personality, uh, and, and <laughs> right, you know, you know, he, 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 he'll talk back to the fans. Same with Shane Taylor, uh, and then you know, Jimmy was a big fan favorite at the time. Uh, so they get out there, and, they, and, and at some point, J Rock goes. For some some lady's chair, or a chair by this lady, and the lady grabs the chair, and and pulls it back. Says, "I'm not giving it to you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not giving it to you." Uh, to the point, and then J Rock like turns around and starts just kind of hitting get hitting Jimmy again. This is like kind of like you know on the outside on the apron, and the lady picks up the chair and hauls off on J Rock's back. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Yes. Uh, and shortly after that was another incident where the older gentleman uh, came over and got in Shane Taylor's face. And I think that almost turned into a shoving match. <laughs> so uh, needless to say, after that, that, they had guardrails in Clearfield, PA from now on. Uh, so, I mean, I mean that, that's kind of the kind of things where you're like, holy crap, you know, that, that, that fans get into it that much, you know. Um, yeah. So I just want to see, like, you know, you guys, you have any memorable things? They don't have to be indie shows that you've seen. There's been plenty of things that have happened, like, we've seen on TV, on pay-per-views. Again, it's a lot of live TV um, or cell phone cams of stuff we've seen in the crowd or something like that. What really sticks out for you guys? Russell fan? Uh, I got one. Uh, I've, a company I've mentioned on the show before, 
our good friends at Anarchy Championship Wrestling. I bet they got some good ones. Oh, they have a good one because uh, if you guys don't know, they do their shows at the uh, beautiful Mohawk Bar in uh, Austin, Texas. It's a great venue. Um, you know, no guardrails because there's no physical way for them to actually put guardrails Not in there, which room. is understandable. Yeah. Um, but also because it's in a bar, there's some bad drunkery that happens mm-hmm. and, uh, that causes some fun stuff. Uh, the best was, uh, this past January, uh, was, uh, uh Jerry Lynn's final match in Texas against mm-hmm. Showtime Scott Summers. Mm-hmm. And it was a great match. You know, they had, they did a lot of great stuff. The crowd was super into it. Uh, especially this one lady, uh, very, um, heavy set, I guess I could say. Um, that bitch was fat. <laughs> <laughs> As Lunchbox puts it, um, who uh, got ex- who was excited, uh, excited for that match uh, so much so that she uh, started grinding on the ring post like it was a stripper pole. Hmm. Nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. Came up to her, was like, "Hey, can you uh, please move back?" Uh, which uh, she responded with uh, flipping them the bird and saying, "Fuck you," uh, which. <laughs> Shut up for something very nice. Um, and it got to the point where Jerry Lynn was delivering his uh, his uh, farewell speech of sorts. And she just hopped up on the apron and started yelling at him. Hmm. That was fun until uh, she finally uh, got carried off by some uh, big wrestlers, which, uh, yeah, you – no, you – no, you don't. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, what about you there, Mr. Uh, Papa LB? Um, I can think of two, um, and mine were happy times Mm -hmm. because I haven't seen a lot of like stupid drunk stuff at indie shows. Mm -hmm. Um, one I was not involved with, and I don't know any of the, the, um, the primaries. That's not the word I want. It doesn't matter. Um, I I saw, I I saw a wrestler do a backflip off a fat kid. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I've seen that. I've seen that. Have you seen that? It's on the internet. Uh, the fat kid is standing by the ring post, and the guy's like, you stand right there. And he fucking uh, plants a foot on the kid's chest, and or his fat gut, and backflips onto his opponent, and then high-fives the fucking fat kid. And the best part of the whole thing is the look on the fat kid's face the whole time. Doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Couldn't give a fuck less. He's not interested that a man did a backflip off of him. He doesn't care that he got a high-five. Nonplussed. Over, over the whole situation, doesn't care, and it's amazing. The other thing, which is amazing, of crowd interaction at indie shows, I was involved in, and so were you, Sorg. What? It was at IWC, International Wrestling Cartel, and it was back when the Gambinos were the Gambino Moving Company. <laughs> and any time they would show up... Um, with their moving company gimmick, me and you and Doc Remedy and I think Chad the Shad for a while, and I'm sure V-Rock and I think Mayhem Miss No, she, I don't know. Uh, anyone who was with us, we would all stand up in unison and we would go, Hey, Gambinos, move this! Oh, Bye, and we no, do that I maneuver, forgot which about means that. nothing to anybody in the world <laughs> except in professional wrestling. <laughs> We're the only people that use this in the world. Um, and those were great times. Those were great times. So wow. I, know, I, posted, I, I posted the clip that uh, Lunchbox was talking about in the chat room. And it was done by none other than Tyro Black, currently known as Seth Rollins. Wow. Yeah. I need to – hold on. This isn't working. <laughs> Bring it up, Sorg. I can't. I can't. It's a, the chat room does a weird thing now where it, it doesn't actually show the videos. Oh, no. So I want to it shows me like a, a Verizon search page now. So that makes uh, me sad. I'm not sure what to do with that. Uh, can you uh, can you like uh, put in the dock or something there, Russell fan? Yeah, I'll do yeah, we'll that. I'll there. do that. So uh, Bobby F. Daytown, what have you uh, witnessed? Um, I have two as well. Um, I mine I, I really didn't have much for indie shows. Like I I haven't been to any really. Um, but I remember when ECW was pretty much an indie promotion, um, and people would just Bullshit. throw shit in the ring. <laughs> uh, and when New Jack brought the wasn't it a fan into the ring and stabbed him with a fork, or was that another I, wrestler? It was, it was another wrestler who was, was too wrestler. young okay. to actually wrestle. Okay, but he got yeah, sued he... over it, so that was exciting. <laughs> um, and the other one I was thinking of when ACH jumped over Wrestle Fan. That's a good one. That's a yeah. really good one. That was a good one. <laughs> the picture of Wrestle Fan. Ah! 
<laughs> picture, mm-hmm. picture, courtesy of Texas A&R Keith Chatwin. He is the man that took that photo. Yes, and is the yes. greatest photo. <laughs> All right, I have the video. I have the video queued up here, and I've got he looks this, this guy looks familiar that he jumped off of. To be honest, <laughs> he looks like a guy that goes at IWC because he's the same build and always has the same Chris Hero shirt. So, it's exciting. I've only seen the GIF. So, oh really? Well, yeah. okay. So, so this happens, right? And he's looking at the guy, and he goes, "Whoop." Yeah. Guy doesn't move. No, wait, but the kid he does get excited afterwards. Well, he goes back to him. <laughs> Look how excited he is. Yeah, he starts kind of bumping. I think they have five or something here in a second. Yeah, there he goes. There he goes. Oh, that, that is amazing. And that's why he's in the shield. That's why wrestling's go. magnificent. It is. You can just fucking backflip off a of fat ass fan. If you can't get happy about wrestling after seeing stuff like that, I mean, I don't know why you're even listening to the show at this point. I, I just, okay. that's amazing. Um, but it, what was it? Tyler Back. Uh, Tyler I believe Back. he's wrestling Matt Seidel in that clip. Wow. wow. <laughs> Tyler so. Back moonsault off fat fan. Black. Uh, if you want to look that up on the YouTubes. Uh, all right. Uh, and I don't think I have anything. Wait, I think I do have one. Do, do, do. Guys, those links don't work for me anymore. Uh, well, drunk Rizzo's Mexican lady, it. just say a Dressel fan. Oh, she's trying to get in the ring. I believe she fell when she was being escorted out. <laughs> so there you go. And also Riz mentions from a $5 wrestling straight out of Compton event, Jimmy the Snake DVT the entire crowd. Oh, I, well, you guys sent me a YouTube of that one. Um, all right, I guys. I've seen that video. With that, uh, let's go to Mad Mike's Minutes of Mayhem. Greetings, Mayhemers. It's Mad Mike once again with your Minute of Mayhem. Okay, so uh, quite a step downward on Raw from this week. The crowd was... Um, I'm not even sure if they were there. In fact, I'm pretty sure that the crowd from Jersey reconvened just to chant, you guys suck. But, um, here we are. Uh, TNA had kind of a big show last week, but I don't know. It seemed a little anticlimactic, especially now we have horrible tag team champions again. I hate you, Chavo. Um, they didn't sign Adam Pierce, which... If he hasn't joined Aces and Eights, what the fuck was the point of bringing in Adam Pierce? But, my prediction came true, friend of the show, on a gut check. Granted, I thought it might be Michael Facade, but, you know, it's only April. Um, and Bully and Jeff had a match, and it was okay, but did anyone really think Bully was going to lose? I didn't. I don't think anyone else did either. Um, so, Mad Mike's top three Raw stars from this week. Gotta be honest, it's kind of difficult to think of three stars from around this week. Um, I guess the third would be hmm, Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, even though he destroyed 3MB, um, you know, he looked good doing it. And the cage match with Triple H will probably be actually pretty fun. Second star this week will have to go to the big show. Because I'm fully in line with DJ Lunchbox is thinking, no, he's a face. He's a face. He's a face that is never booked as a face, even though he's booked as a face. Um, but yeah, basically, I hate Seamus and Randy Orton, and there was an ad for a Raw house show coming to Poughkeepsie. The first two people they advertised were Seamus and Randy Orton. I'm like, nope, not going to go. Oh, but the first star is to Raw next week in London, because, um, The Undertaker is going to have a match. Will it happen? I don't know. But he's scheduled for a match. He's booked for a match. It's more than The Rock and Brock Lesnar have been booked in two years. But, uh, yeah, that should be interesting. It should be a lot of fun, especially if they actually go through with it and he actually wrestles. It's London, so it's a very good chance he might. And please... Please, for the love of God, do not put the IC title on our truth. Please. I'm begging you. Please. WWE, do this for me. Please do not do that. Please keep the title on Wade Barrett. Because we already lost Cesaro. We need to lose Barrett, too. Well, uh, that's it for the minute this week. 
Peace, bitches. Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for Mad Mike's Minute of Mayhem. Whoa, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Thank like, you, fans, for like, that. Like, like, I don't know who I was thanking. Like, what happened? <laughs> I don't know who I was thanking on that one. Okay, I'll well, okay, try again. Thanks, man, Mike, for that minute of mayhem. And I'm so appreciate that he's using the board in the background, by the way, right? Mm. So, uh, with that, let's go to our next segment. Uh, the uh, 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 comments from the unwashed masses, Mr. Bobby F. J. Town. Bobby's actually here to read it. Hey, I'm actually here for this this week. Um, it's time for comments from the unwashed masses. Um, this is in this is on from, comes to us from Facebook in regards to uh, John uh, John Cena um, being a Make a Wish person, I guess. Uh, salute John Cena. A go. I know you as as a respectable fighter, but from now on, I know you as a respectable man. So, <laughs> oh, wow, so, that was deep. <laughs> so loyalty, respect. I think somebody's doing some peyote. <laughs> peyote. Um, our next one <laughs> is know. actually the fan of the week or the comment of the week, um, just because it, it it was fun to find it and fun to re- it's going to be fun to read. It starts out with "Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> shut up." <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Get it, out. it does actually start out with oh yeah a super scene return is eminent how exciting we all know he's going to defeat impossible odds and end the shield just like nexus just like a- a- anyone else super cena could get leg dropped from 80s hulk hogan choke slam choke slam slammed and tombstone by taker Stunned by Austin, F5 by Lesnar, leg snap by Hart's sharpshooter, arm snap by Backlund's crossface, chicky wing. Yes, yes. <laughs> chicky, chicky wing. wing. Uh, yeah, back that's broken what we're by calling Iron it from Sheik's here on out. Clutch. What's that, Lunchbox? That's what we're calling it from here on <laughs> out. Bob Backlund's uh, chicky wing. <laughs> the chicky wing. Uh, back broken by uh, Iron Sheik's camel clutch, ankles broken by Angle's ankle lock, Shot straight in the face by Optimus Prime's Ion Blaster. What the hell? And, and he'd get back up. Double A, every single one of them. Standing on top of the mountain with his arms in the air in a victorious gesture. I am so looking forward to seeing the forthcoming reign of the same old shit, different decade. <laughs> oh, my. That's excessive. Um, Sorg, I, I think you have some, too. What? Oh, I didn't. No, I didn't actually line oh, them up. But didn't. if you want some, go look at the comments for the Bleacher Report about the Montreal Theory screw job because <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty astonishing. Uh, oh, particularly cool. the one that apparently inferred that uh, the the DVD was a uh, a joint effort by Ring of Honor and Prime Wrestling as a smear campaign against WWE. <laughs> I was like. What? I know Chachi was reading a lot of those earlier and sent a lot over, so... So there's that. Um, yeah. And that'll do it for Unwashed Masses this week. There You're you welcome. There you go. So, uh, with that, I, I, I have to pose the question. Uh, we're one week removed. Uh, I think most of us here have downloaded the Fandango theme song in one form or another. Yep. I downloaded uh, it twice. <laughs> twice. Twice. Um, one so- by itself, and then the other time on the WrestleMania 18... 18- the album they put out. Yeah, that eight dollar like <laughs> WrestleMania album is freaking yeah. awesome. I've been Missy is hating that I'm just bringing in entry, entrance <laughs> themes when I enter a room now because it's on my phone um, <laughs> on iTunes. Um. Uh, what? 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 Or anytime somebody's like, man, I don't even know how to do the 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 fandangoing thing. Like I don't even know how it goes. I'm like, well, ba da ba ba ba. At this point, <laughs> and just bring it up. It's very accessible and very fun. So, um, but I don't know. We're a week removed. I, I, and you guys in the in the they were in the hangout last night. I thought there was kind of big signals on how you felt that whole segment went. Is it over? Did they kill it? Did they drive it into the ground? Uh, I, I don't think there was a problem with last night. Mm-hmm. I think something happened. Yeah. I think it was organic. Uh, the right people yeah. in the social way, wait, 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 the right people in the social media in WWE pushed it by creating the ha- fandangoing hashtag, or even if they weren't the ones that created it, they propagated it and, and pushed it through, uh, the rest of the week. Um, you know, who do you blame for that getting on all the TV that they did over the last week? Uh, so of course they're going to reflect that when they show it. And they had him come out and just kind of, play with the crowd right mm-hmm. and yeah. see how that 
you know, does, what about what what does happen when he tries to make him say it with it? Does that work? You know, maybe that didn't work so well. Hopefully, he doesn't do it anymore. But people did do the fandangoing. They had plenty of pictures of people dancing in the crowds. I think it's gonna be a thing for a good while. Mm-hmm. Uh, a wrestle I, fan, I, I, I of hope... course, disagrees with me. Well, no, okay, yeah, of course. <laughs> Uh, I hope it's. I hope that happens, Sorg, and I really hope that is. Uh, and I, I thought the segment was good. I think Fandango did do a good job. You know, coming off of all the stuff. I, do, I disagree. I completely disagree with you saying it was organic. It was the exact opposite of organic. Okay. No, I think Sorg was talking about last week, not this oh, week. Okay. Well, then, yeah, last week was absolutely organic. Yes. This week, abs- it was not. It was the yeah, it. It's, I forgot who described it on Twitter, but it was literally like when your parents do something super cool and it automatically just doesn't – like they were prompting people – they were prompting people in the crowd to do the Fandango. And that and that's <laughs> – You can't say it like that. You can't say it like that. To do the Fandango. No, you, you um, can't say it like that. Fandango, Thunderbolts and That's Mike. exactly <laughs> why you can't very say very it like that. Galileo, Galileo. Galileo Figaro, let it go. Wrestle fan, not old enough to get the reference. <laughs> I get the reference. Don't um, watch the Wayne's World. I don't know. I hope it still is a thing. I just really don't um, think it will be. I think it I, I, really has died. I, I, I hope I, London reinvigorates it. I, but. I think next week is going to be the the, the tell. If it, I I think if the the London fans make it a thing again, I think it'll be fine. Hmm. Um, if they it, uh, turn their back on it, not going to be a thing anymore. Will it, though? Will it be fine? Even if they do pick it up and start singing, you know, how long, what's the shelf life of people singing the Fandango theme? Eight years. Eight that's years. About, that's about that's how long, long what has lasted. We really enjoy it right now because it's something new it's something interesting it's it's the crowd saying you know we're bored with this one thing it happened during a boring match mm-hmm. you know it was it was somebody speaking out yeah um, so it's <laughs> the, sorry, it's the but, new boring chant you're saying yeah it's no what i'm what i'm chant. saying is after a month we're going to be fucking sick of it or after a month we were sick of what what yeah. After yeah. eight years, we're certainly sick of what? What? Imagine but is what we'll do gonna... with people singing Fandango's And you theme. still get it. I think it's still going to happen. I think it's very possible this could be the same as I'm at an indie show and I hear people wooing. You know, I, I think... You uh, have Penguins games and you hear people wooing. Yeah, yeah. No, there, was people, there, well, there was people wooing. Actually, they play, they actually, they play the Ric Flair thing at the hockey game I attended mm-hmm. in Wheeling. So... Um, but but still, like that becomes a cultural thing, and, and I think there's no, potential you, for this happening as well. You can't compare the Fandango theme to Ric Flair wooing. No, no, no. I more yeah. compare that to like maybe the what thing or the yes thing. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It, but I think I think the only drawback with it is it takes a little more coordination amongst multiple people to work. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, and, and, and you're going to see a you lot. You do of, have some people doing this with their fingers, and but you you know it's that no one's going to coordinate them seeing the Fandango theme together. Yeah, I, it's going to be a little harder. I think that crowd I, was a once in a lifetime special moment thing too. Yeah, possibly mm-hmm. that you can get all those people doing the same exact thing like that. Yeah. yeah. I definitely think that it's – I think it's dead in a couple of weeks. Hmm. People will still try to make it happen, but nobody's going to really get on board and WWE isn't going to help themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're going to keep – they're going to you know, be like, oh, Fandango's super popular and they did this thing in, on the UK, so let's push him. And then they'll push him in the way that WWE pushes people and it will fail. Like more to death. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I mean, like, like, like last night was a, was a good example, you know, like – like okay, we can see that you don't get it, so maybe you don't. Maybe you leave it alone. But if WWE is not known for anything, it's leaving anything alone. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I guess that's true. Um, well, that sentence made sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, did anything else happen last night other than Fandango? What do we think of Ryback? Uh, there, was, um, there was an interesting, uh, I don't know where I saw this. I want to say it was WrestleZone's Twitter. Maybe it was one of you guys. Uh, but they said, isn't it interesting, uh, Ryback's retrospective 
uh, uh, promo last night compared to Bully Ray's retrospective uh, retcon promo from about very a month similar. Ago. They kind of similar, yeah, yeah. Kind of taking all these loose bits. It is. It was kind of a retcon promo, wasn't it? Mm. And can we coin that? Can we? Can is that what we can call those things at this point? Hey, here's things that we really didn't plan to go together, but we kind of rethought the thinking. And really, if you still look at it, it still doesn't make entirely sense in the <laughs> Did long you say run. Rethought the thinking. <laughs> that's a good phrase. I like that. I just retconned my own sentence. Well, that's okay? the thing. The right back thing makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. But they just wanted to add so much extra stuff that it kind of got a bit like convoluted, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, yeah, he eliminated him in the Royal Rumble. Yeah, you know, he really wasn't there for him at certain times. Like, that's all you need. That's really all you need. It's, it's the best Ryback promo I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. but like I lot, think it very but... much involved the teleprompter, too. So, well, yeah. duh. <laughs> but so, but that, what? How's that any different than all their you know wrestlers doing scripted promos? No, Ryback, no. Read. <laughs> He's a very good reader. <laughs> I mean, I read. give him that. At least much. he didn't. At least he didn't have to ask for his line. Mid- yeah. There you go. Don't the voices in his head tell him those promos, Randy Orton? Yeah. I just really hate that. I, I'm still I'm still caught up on that thing. <laughs> Like, no, seriously, the, is, is the only thing he needed to illustrate was, I don't like the Big Show and I want to match with him. How hard would be there's that to remember? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's a shame, too, because that's three of the least exciting, but... Fucking... I had, I, I, like I said last night, don't say fuck you, Wrestle fan. I still want to watch it. But the fact of the matter is... I, I had a shitload of technical difficulties on Raw. I had nothing but problems in my house as soon as I got home. I had a girlfriend that I needed to keep happy. I barely got to watch Raw, let alone NXT. I don't Mm -hmm. blame you on that. Okay. I'm a thousand percent still going to watch it. I want to see the match between Cash Asono and William Regal, and I want to see what all the fuss is about. Guys, guys, legit watch it. Like, seriously, everyone out there, this is going to everyone out there, watch the Cash of Soda William <laughs> Regal match. It's listen, fucking amazing. Listen, listen. It, no, seriously. I, I, I will, it is no, let's, let's, let's. so fucking heart good, heart. I can't even That's describe hard. Let's it. talk about some NXT right now. Heart to yeah. heart. Okay. I know, actually, I did start watching it, so now I'm up to mid-March, um, and I'm starting to see the start of that Regal stuff you were telling me about. So. so good. Mm. I swear to God, I don't know how like the NXT developmental system works, but William Regal needs to be showing those guys everything he knows because mm-hmm. he's mm-hmm. a fucking god in the ring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about WrestleMania. Uh, refunds. Two weeks ago. Refunds that are not happening. Uh, so yeah. this kind of kills this for me. Uh, so you pay $70 to watch it on an iPad or on your Xbox that they push to the moon here, like you know, a mere hour before the show. Um, and what was it? The first 40 minutes didn't show? If I, I recall. So. Uh, and there's, and, and <laughs> there was... There was... Um, a letter that that somebody received when when you know complaining about this say hey what the, what the hell uh, and, and this is how it goes hello uh, thank you for your purchase Whoa. of Russell what Mania. the fuck was that somebody have an earthquake thunder what the fuck oh, was thunder. that Bobby holy got the storm shit, man holy wow. shit wow Jesus That's my house I said there was a T Rex out there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyways, it, it goes, uh, thank you for your purchase of WrestleMania 29. We apologize for the technical difficulties you experienced during the event. After further in- investigation, we are happy to see that you were able to view the event after the technical issues were resolved. We sincerely apologize for any inconvenience and hope you enjoyed the show. Sincerely, WWE Customer Support Team. So... Paraphrase that. Go fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah, that was like the, the the noise. Like, I the first comment is like, so basically they say, "Thank you for your money. You're not getting it back, sucker." Um, yeah, <laughs> that's not it's the like, way to go. But I, like, I remember pay per views now. Now I had like you know Prime Star, Direct TV, you know, a good fifteen years ago, and I would have a storm roll over my neighborhood, and I would lose like we we uh, uh, I would lose like uh the latter half hour of a pay-per-view or something right i got my fucking money back mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and you have a technical difficulty <laughs> and i paid fucking 70 dollars through your shit fuck that 
That's the WWE just um, lost any rights to complain about the streamers out there. Oh yeah. Uh, for, to the people doing the alternative methods and willing to go to your Xbox app, willing to go to your iPod app, and this isn't a discussion about whether streaming pay-per-views are right or wrong in that thing. This is kind of a principle thing. Um, you, you with this, everybody that sees this story has in their heart, in their heart, in their soul, every right to go and stream that pay-per-view and not give a fuck about giving you money for it. Yeah. <laughs> So it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Like I understand why they don't want to give the money back because that's a fuckload of money to give back. Yeah, everybody who who tried to stream it. It sounds like it was but, across the board, right? It was like everybody that was on the Xbox app, everybody that was on whatever that served to. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and granted, it's not nearly as big as probably their their regular pay per view buys because that's the general populace, right? But that's still a fuckload of people probably jumped in on that. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's bad business. It's yeah, bad it is. customer relations. But, but again, I mean, I, I mean, when has WWE ever been super great to their customers? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, but the, we it's haven't a, we haven't seen an issue that we have not seen them have an issue. I do remember uh, WCW having a similar, not a similar issue, but an issue where, um, where the latter part of a pay per view. Uh, got cut off or something yeah, like that, or they yeah, ran late. Goldberg and DDP. It actually that, ran that over time. Cut off. Yeah, it got cut off, and they showed the entire main event in full the next night. Uh, you know, granted, probably not a lot of people were watching at that time, but still, um, I, I think TNA had a similar issue where there was there was a problem, and they showed the uh, the X. I think it was the Ultimate X match the next night. Mm -hmm. um, or they actually remember the one time they redid the Ultimate X match oh, yeah, they because the up. X fell. Uh, but they're, no, they're, I think oh, they've yeah, done, I remember they've, that. I think they've done the replay thing as well, though, too. Um, so I mean, it just you got you know you got to take the bullet. At least give a discount. Like give give somebody ten bucks back. Mm -hmm. You know, Te Texas Anarchy says in the chat room, give give them a bunch of free footage and access, not just say fuck you with keeping your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. Or, or it was a very so. nice way to say "fuck you." We're keeping your money, but <laughs> no, no, that doesn't work. That does not work. I, I, I would be, I would be livid, and I would not buy a single pay per view if this happened to me. Maybe give them ten or twenty bucks towards the purchase of an X pay per view. Yeah, maybe. yeah. I mean, it, 15, this yeah. all happened through Ring your system. That there, it's I not think. like you have to go through Verizon, FiOS, and Comcast, and God knows who else, right? Mm -hmm. When that, that thing where the, I think it was the FiOS customers lost a bit of the CM Punk match, like that's that's Verizon's fault. You go to Verizon, you don't go to WWE. WWE, maybe that's a problem. WWE hasn't had a one on one with their customers like this you know mm -hmm. the fact that you know there it's their system it's their technology it's their payment system so they are completely in their uh should be within their facilities to say sorry about that here's a percentage off you don't have to give people 70 dollars back if you gave them 10 bucks back you know mm -hmm. and say okay it was it was the first hour it wasn't as important part of the show if you lost the john cena rock match then god here's your money back because that's probably why you tuned in uh, on paper, right? Um, <laughs> I don't mean that to become another debate. Uh, but, you know. Uh, fucking man. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> fucking man. But, yeah, no, yeah like, you get five bucks. You have ten bucks back. Style. You give them a coupon code to, to get a percentage off for the next pay-per-view. You know, something like that. Pay it forward so, so these people that stuck their necks out with you and your new technology uh, do something, you know. I mean, that's let's go back to the iPay-per-view thing. Uh, yeah, that's what that's what Ring of Honor did. They did uh they gave them a discount on the next iPay-per-view. So Yeah. Yeah, and you have to. And maybe it's just because they're they're smaller and they have to to retain those people that are really sticking their necks out on new technology. But this is like it's WWE. They're the biggest fucking company in the world doing this thing. They should have You should know better. <laughs> so Anyways. It just goes to show the the lack of respect they have for their fan base. Yeah, well, it's one of those. I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know if that's universal. No, I think there are people in WWE that do have a lack of respect for their fan base. I don't think everyone in WWE does. I don't think necessarily Vince McMahon does. But, but I think it's a similar. Uh, no, I think it's a similar problem to what we were talking earlier tonight on Let's Play with EA. They've become a little bit too big to do some of these things. 
Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, I mean, you talk about fan service. TNA does a very good job about fan service in their live shows. A wonderful job with it. But they're smaller. <laughs> they're more nimble. They have to do that. They're, they're, they, they, they have to do that. WWE mm-hmm. does not have to do that. You're going to be giving your money to them regardless. And it's going to be very big. And they don't have to serve all of you at that fan access with those amazingly large lines. You know, um, you know, uh, <laughs> Texas Anarchy chimes in in the chat room. He believes that this pay-per-view scandal is a conspiracy between the ROH, IWC, <laughs> Chikara, and Herb and Abrams UWF to ruin the WWE. Uh, it's you on the Bleacher Report, you motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> so there's that. Uh, all right. On that, is there anything else you guys want to touch on before we get out of here? Hmm. If not, I want to know from you, and especially you, DJ Lunchbox, what did you learn from wrestling this week? I learned... Oh, I put it in the dock to you, didn't I? <laughs> uh, uh, I learned that I need to bring up the dock to remember... <laughs> oh, I remember Jesus cries when you fandango yourself. <laughs> oh. That was it. That was it. There it yeah. is. Yeah. How about you, wrestle fan? Uh, I learned from re- wrestling this week, I learned from TNA this week, that uh, Terrence Harrell wants to get physical with everyone. Ooh. No, Why do you, I, I want to know, no, I no, know about Terrell. this. Why do you hate Terrence Harrell so much? Well, I hated her because she's a fucking god-awful referee. And then, and then she decides, oh, I'm going to be a wrestler. And it's so conflicting because she's actually not a bad wrestler. Then go have sex with Jimmy Corderas if you're complaining about her being a a referee. Fuck that, okay? Jimmy Corderas knows what rope breaks are, (laughs) Bobby, okay? But no, she tries to Doesn't mean you have to go down on him. The problem is she's a great wrestler. (laughs) She's a good to great wrestler, but she wears like 10% of clothing, like not even like... And you're complaining? Yes! Because it's so horrible and so bad and no one is cheering for her other than the fact that you can see her ass. And well, you can't. You listen. Amazing. You can't. You can't take it out on Taryn Terrell because the audience is stupid. Mm. <laughs> and Taryn Terrell, go beat up your boyfriend again. <laughs> oh, poor Drew McIntyre. Oh shit! I forgot about that. Girlfriend. You guys remember Cherry? She was great. Bobby, what yeah, you learn yeah. in wrestling this week? <laughs> what I learned that? Cherry was still a thing. No, I learned. <laughs> I learned that. Um, Wreck-It Ralph is a great alternative for Monday Night Raw when you are angry over Antonio Cesaro losing <laughs> the United States Championship. How'd that go? How'd that go? Good. I, I really like Wreck-It Ralph. That's it was good. really That's good. good. Who went over? Um, uh, Wreck-It Ralph. Good. Oh, oh good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it was, it was good. All right. Uh, Sorg. Yeah! You. Hey! You, sir. <laughs> I learned you never, never be late for a midget match. Oh, no. What happened? It, it, it lends the post-editing when you don't know which midget is which. <laughs> Professionals! All right, guys, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you for joining us. You can join more of us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Blip TV, Roku, YouTube, video and audio formats. You can join us, all of us at the good times. Good times! Good times. At WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can join us by calling us at 412-206-WMS0. No! You can join us by buying the app! WMS Gold uh, on your iOS App Store, Amazon App Store, Android, and, and iPhone devices. Uh, we have the Mayhem Wear Store. We have uh, all the other stuff at SorgatronMedia.com as well. Uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. WrestleFanWrites.blogspot.com. Uh, because he won't write for Wrestling Mayhem nope. Show anymore. Nope, Rates. nope, nope. WrestleFanWrites, <laughs> Jimmy Cordero's fa- fa- fan fiction. <laughs> No, it would just be because if I wrote for WrestlingMayhemShow.com, it would just be pictures of ACH with uh, little MS Paint hearts all over them because I have a giant raging boner for him. Apparently, nope, it's been transferred like to Jimmy Corderas. Mike Kyoto <laughs> fan like fiction. I want to have a rival Mike Kyoto fan fiction site to take you on. <laughs> Mike Kyoto, I, I, Mike Kyoto's up there. I gotta say, what if there is? Is there like wrestling fan fiction? 
about like in Lahey. general. You, you, you've never seen oh. wrestling I guess fan fiction? I guess that's fancy booking, isn't it? There is so I've... much wrestling. Yeah, except with more butt fucking. Wait, what? Uh, yeah, wrestling fan, how do you know about that? Dark yeah, how do you know about this? Oh, how do you not know about wrestling fan fiction? Wrestling fan fiction is fucking hilarious. I never thought to go look for it. No. You should. You really should. It will give you a good laugh. Huh. <laughs> well, I learned uh, by, something. By a good laugh, he means nightmares. Yeah. Uh, I got enough of those. I got enough of those. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Wrestling Man Show. Thank you very much uh, for the guys, for everybody in the chat room. Thank you for joining us. Mayhem Show. Out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.